Okay, next page of your packet, 1B, let's talk about proportional relationships. Pencil ready to go. So proportional relationships, this is when two ratios or rates are equivalent to one another. This means they're making the same comparison. So even though the numbers might be bigger or smaller, the comparison between those numbers is the same no matter what. There are several ways to show the proportional relationships, but we are going to look at two different ways specifically that we'll constantly come back to. So let's start filling in our table. The first relationship is to be able to divide or multiply across, noticing the relationship across, so right and left. And sometimes we multiply, sometimes we divide, depending on the, the way the numbers go. The second relationship is divide or multiplying up or down. So there's also connections up or down when you um, look at two sets of equivalent ratios or rates. So let's look at our examples. So these are the same sets of um, ratios that we're comparing or rates, um, since we don't have quantities with them. So the first way we're going to look is noticing the connection across. And I'm sure some of you are already noticing this. So if you see 5 to 15 and you're looking across, how did we get from 5 to 15? And we're talking about either dividing or multiplying. We know that we are multiplying by 3. So we're doing that arrow across showing times 3. So make sure your notes look just like mine. Okay? And if this is proportional, that means we would need to be doing the exact same thing to the bottom set of numbers. And if we look to get from 10 to 30, we are also multiplying by 3. So that is the relationship across in this case. We're multiplying both numbers from on the left side by 3 to get to the numbers on the right side. So that's the connection across. Now if we were going to go the other way from the right side to the left, we could say we're dividing by 3. That's another option of how to look at it depending on which direction you go. So now let's look at the up and down relationship. So if we look at 5 to 10 and compare how did we get from 5 to 10. Let me see if I can get my arrow to show up. There we go. So going from 5 to 10, we are multiplying by 2. So now the relationship that we're looking at up and down is times 2. And it, since they're proportional, we'd want to keep it the same. So if we're looking over here, again, my arrow's hiding on me. There it is. 15 times 2 is going to give us 30. So this is proportional. We are multiplying by 2 as well on this side up and down. So this would work. So that's the relationship up and down. And again, if we went from bottom to top, we'd say we're dividing by 2. So those are the two relationships. If you need to go back and take a closer look, feel free. But let's keep on going. All right. So on to the next problems. Now we're going to determine if the ratios are equivalent and explain how we know. So I'm going to leave the explaining up to you, but I will talk through it and you can kind of use what I'm talking about to help with your explanation. So I should see like a sentence of explanation for yours, but you'll hear it from me, not necessarily see it. You'll have to kind of do that part on your own. So we need to look and see, is there a connection either across or up and down that makes these proportional to one another, that makes these equivalent. So if I look, I'm not really seeing anything up or down, but I do see a relationship across. 7 times 6 gives me 42. So if these are equivalent, that means I would also need to be multiplying by 6 on the bottom. And if I look, 8 times 6 does give me 48. My arrow's hiding, that's okay, we'll get to show up later. Um, so this is equivalent. These are equivalent to one another. There it is. Because we're multiplying both numbers by 6. So these are equivalent. And you should be able to explain how you know that because I just talked through it. So they're equivalent because you multiply both numbers by 6 to get the next ratio. So let's look at this next one. Now I could look across. I could look up or down. I'm going to choose to look across first because that just was what makes sense in my head. So if I look across, I know that I could do 3 times 4 to get 12. But the thing is, if it's going to be equivalent, I have to be multiplying the 6 by 4 to get the other number. And unfortunately, that's not going to work. It's times 5. So I'm not multiplying by the same thing. So these are not equivalent. And I could notice that multiplying, or I'm sorry, with the relationship up and down too. If I look up and down... I am doing 3 times 2 to get 6, but over here, I would actually need to take 
12 times 2.5, right? Because half of 12 would be 6. So I would do 12 times 2 and then add that 6 into it. And that's how I'd get to 30. But that's not multiplying by the same thing on both sides. It's times 2 over here versus times 2.5. So you can explain that either way using the cross relationship or the up and down relationship. Your choice. But they are not equivalent. Let's look at one more. I don't really notice a connection with 6 and 9, but I do see a connection with 6 and 18, and I notice that I can multiply by 3 to go from 6 to 18. And if they're equivalent, that means I would need to multiply by 3 on this side, but I notice that 9 times 4, where's it hiding on me? There it is. 9 times 4 gives me 36. So that is not the same number that I'm multiplying by. So that means these are not equivalent again. Okay? So make sure you added your explanation. I should see a sentence with this so you can say equivalent because or not equivalent because and then explain one of the ways that I talked through. So now I want you to pause this video and try the next uh, two problems on your own and see if you can do them and then unpause the video so you can see the answer. So go ahead and take a moment, pause, do those on your own and what you're doing is using one of the proportional relationships we just talked about either across or up and down to find the missing number. So go ahead and pause the video so you can do that and then unpause when you're ready. All right, I hope you took time to pause the video and do those two problems, but I'm gonna talk through them real quick. So I noticed that in order to figure out this missing number here, we had to look um, up and down because it really wasn't an across for nine to 12, at least not with a whole number. So I knew that three times three gave me nine, so that meant I needed to think what times three gave me 12, or I could work backwards and do 12 divided by three, and that gives me four, so I know four was my missing number. For this next one, I went across because I didn't really see an, a whole number connection with 6 and 10, so I went across. And I know that 6 times 9 gives me 54, so then I had to do the same thing to the 10 and do 10 times 9 to get 90, so our missing number was 90. Okay, so I hope you understood this, and if not, feel free to go back and rewind, ask questions as needed, um, but otherwise, push forward and either do some of the optional IXL if you feel like you need a little bit more practice with this before moving on to that quick check. But if you feel good, go grab that quick check from your teacher. Good luck.